Hey, what's up? It's Deanna. And how are you all doing today? So today I wanted to show you another recent acquisition to my collection. And this is an antique French or Russian miniature enamel on copper guilloche portrait in an ebony frame. And this was probably made anywhere between, I'd say, 1860s to about 1880s. Now, before portraits and photography were invented, people got their portraits painted. So there was, you know, pretty much that was the only way you can get an image of yourself. So that was very, very common. Now, after the onset of the invention of photography, of course, everybody was starting to get their photos taken. But people during the Victorian era were used to the olden ways of things and portraits and things painted. And so what happened was, was that they started to collect portrait miniatures of noble people. So like it wasn't unheard of for a Victorian household to have a bunch of these portrait miniatures, especially if they went abroad. So if they say went on a grand tour of Europe, they would bring back these European pieces of artwork as some sign of elitism or actually uh, wealth. And so they would have them in their house as a decorative piece. Now this particular piece is quite interesting and it depicts a French noble lady and I'm thinking it's most likely Marie Antoinette or one of the court ladies or noble women of the time of about the mid to late 1700s. So uh, probably like around the time of Louis the 15th, Louis the 16th. And I could swear that this is definitely Marie Antoinette, although I could be wrong. There was a lot of other noble women with this style, like Lady Pompadour and all the other like court ladies, especially the mistresses of the king as well. So the kings always had these mistresses and people romanticized them and had portrait miniatures of them too in their collection. So now this piece is just absolutely exquisite. It has its original ebony frame and on the back, it has the most beautiful, beautiful textile um, pattern. And you can see here rampant lions on their hind legs with crowns on their head. And below here, you'll see mythical griffin creatures and um, you'll see this beautiful beautiful silken material and this wasn't a cheap piece when it was made this was something that somebody spent quite a bit of money for now you can also tell something very old by the way the nails are these nails were not machine made also if you see things with phillips head screws in the back you know it's not antique a lot of antique reproductions have things and they foolishly put if they're trying to trick people they foolishly put phillips head screws and that's a telltale giveaway that your item as is actually a revival piece and not an original antique but this piece is the real deal and again it's gorgeous now a lot of these pieces were actually painted on ivory so you gotta you you see a lot of these portrait miniatures painted on ivory and the ivory pieces were a thin, thin little sheet of wafer ivory. It was so thin, it was transparent. If you held it up to the light, you could see through it. Now, you don't see too many of these type of pieces. And this is, I believe, there's a French term for it. If I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, I'm sorry. I believe it's called guilloche. And if you look in the light, you can see an iridescent. So this is an enamel. This is a very special enamel. Look at the enamel work. You see how it shimmers when I turn it into different um, angles under my lamp here. You see the green? Look at that. And this was painted on a piece of copper. Now, also you see a lot of these portrait miniatures painted on porcelain as well, but you don't see too much of the guilloche pieces. And when you do, they're quite rare. Um, this one has a gorgeous, gorgeous, nice royal green color. You can see the hand paint work. Now this was not transfer wear, which was usually like a picture that was pasted onto something and painted over. This is freehand. So somebody freehanded this. Look at the guilloche ribbons in her hair. You see the shimmer? Look how that shimmers under the light. She has hand painted roses in her hair. I mean, beautiful. You could see the brush strokes on this piece. So it's quite gorgeous. Now I wanted to uh, give you a TIL. A today I learned lesson. It's always really interesting to teach people about these things. So back in the 1700s, it was the rave. It was all the rage to have powdered wigs. And they were these big, gigantic pompadour hairstyles. Um, <laughs> they uh, got that hair that high by placing wire cages and then 
wrapping the hair around the wire cages. Usually it wasn't even the person's own hair and it turned and, and it turned it into this big gigantic wig. They took flour, actually cooking flour, and turned the wigs white. And I don't know why they did that. It was insane, but that was the style. And the worst part of it all was even the richest of the most elite people, the noble people, we're talking royal court people, actually had hair that was teeming with bugs and insects. Now, the sick part was the reason why a lot of them wore these wigs in the first place was because they had bad issues with lice since they had poor hygiene and they had lice. They had to shave their hair and that's why they had to wear these wigs in the first place. Now, what would happen was the flower would attract all sorts of vermin and insects. Now, their hair would be covered and like basically alive, crawling with these insects. Now, the scariest part of all is sometimes when they would take their wigs off to go to sleep at night, they would place them in a corner or on a chair. <laughs> and mice and rats would make their way into the wigs and make homes. They would actually nest inside these wigs. Now, it was so bad that these people had such bad itching problems. Their heads would be constantly itchy. Their scalps would be on fire with um, lacerations and, and inflammation and um, all sorts of hives. And it was just disgusting from all the bug bites that they had things called itching rods. And an itching rod was this long skinny rod because they were so vain they didn't want to mess their hair up. And so they would itch their heads with itching rods. And they would walk around with these rods and just like nothing. They would just sit there and itch their heads. So that is disgusting. So today you could say T-I-L. Today I learned that people once used itching rods because their heads were infested with bugs. So hopefully you enjoyed my video. I hope you weren't eating or drinking something while I told you all about this. And uh, come and uh, check back soon because I'll be showing you more videos and giving you more interesting historical information about these antiques. So long and have a great evening or a great day wherever you are in the world.